Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, students and pupils of Paul Kirsch. Thank you, Paul, for giving me this assignment. Uh, this is my second take, and I hope my last one for this evening. Let me present my little video. Studying a Rembrandt painting by Jean-Marie Clark, art historian and uh, a production of JMC Studio, Studio JMC. I am an art historian, that is, trained as an art historian uh, with a master's degree. And I call myself art historian because um, I use the history of art as my medium to do art. And I'll show you what that, what that looks like. But first, let's um, look at this painting. This is a painting that I started studying for my master's 40 years ago, and I've been studying it ever since. And uh, this is actually the only painting that I've ever studied in my whole uh, career as an art historian. Um, I've done other things, but uh, this has been the focus of my research. And it's a painting by Rembrandt, Rembrandt von Rhein. Uh, this is his full name. Rembrandt is a first name, you should know. Um, it was painted in 1632. And... Um, on a piece of wood. Let me give you an idea of what that, what that looks like. Here we see um, the curator at the Louvre, Jacques Foucault, the former curator, looking at the painting outside of the frame in sunlight, which is something you should not do with old master paintings. But we had to do this because um, it was uh, the Rembrandt Research Project, a big project to establish a catalog of Rembrandt's work, what is by Rembrandt, not by Rembrandt, had rejected this. So we took the painting out of the frame and we studied it and we took it to the lab and all sorts of stuff. I wrote an article and I helped to reinstate, to make a long story short, 25 years later, this painting was uh, confirmed as a painting by Rembrandt and I contributed to this reinstatement. Anyway, you see it's painted on a piece of wood. It's only about that big, uh, about as big as a long playing record, an LP. And um, what shall I say? Uh, art historians study mostly pictures. Uh, when people say art, they mean pictures, they mean images. So here we've got an image, or rather a photograph of an image, the printed out photograph of an image uh, that was painted with oils and a very fine, um, very fine brushes. So you've got a lot of details. You, you can see his eyes. They're like two little points here. You can see nails here in the staircase. So it's done with a great deal of uh, detail and a very, very sharp eyes. Uh, let me see. Um, what can I say? So art historians try to figure out what a painting is about. And in the old days, uh, usually people painted, like 99% of the time, they painted uh, paintings of something that people knew about. They didn't paint anything abstract. They always painted something representational, figurative figures, and uh, often from the Bible. And uh, this painting, however, is called Philosopher in Meditation. You go to the Louvre, it says in French, Philosophe en Meditation. But in Rembrandt's days, people didn't go around putting titles on paintings, uh, and most paintings um, didn't, uh, weren't published right away, so you had to know, you had to figure out uh, the subject from certain clues. It wasn't a, a mystery, but it was part of uh, what painting was about. So painters were very ingenious about making paintings that are that come that illustrate a certain story but also have new aspects to it that they added to it for example uh, this is not a biblical interior this is not even a dutch interior it's entirely imaginary um, we can't get into this but if you looked at this uh, study the staircase how it fits into the room there would be no way you could uh, built, actually build this interior with this kind of a staircase and usually spiral staircases uh, take up very little room. That's what, they're, what, that's what they're for. And here it takes up the whole room. So it's very imp important and it was very important for Rembrandt. Now why was it called a philosopher? I've got a print here. Where is it? 
where did I put it? Ah, here it is. So, the reason it was called a philosopher was because in the, in the old days, um, it was sold, this is the 18th century, it was sold together with this painting. They're the, the same size, astonishingly enough. Both have a spiral staircase in it. And uh, here you see um, what you would call a scholar, because he's got books, a crucifix, a globe, in a kind of, and he's alone, and um, in an interior a little bit like churchy interior. But here you've got um, the old man and you've got another figure and even another figure in the staircase which has disappeared. We don't really know if it got restored out of uh, the picture or if Rembrandt himself painted it over and somebody uh, just reinforced it in reproducing. These are uh, reproductions, engravings, line engravings uh, from the 18th century um, French when, it, when the painting came to Paris. So because they were together, they were sold together and collected together, and this one looked like a philosopher, this was also called a philosopher. But a few hundred years later, down the line, in 1955, uh, art historians uh, decided, no, that's other paintings, not by Rembrandt, therefore it has nothing to do with it. What this painting is about, uh, and this is still being contested today, uh, I'm having trouble pushing this through, although it's absolutely plausible. You've got an old man and an old woman. This is Tobit from the Book of Tobit in the Old Testament, and he's blind. And this is his wife, Anna, and they're waiting for the return of their son, Tobias, who they sent to another city uh, to collect a debt. And um, Tobias is accompanied on his trip by um, our, an angel in disguise, and the angel's name is Raphael. And Raphael is also the name of the Renaissance painter, who was the most famous painter at the time, in Rembrandt's day. And so uh, Raphael, the angel, helps Tobias cure his father of his blindness when he comes home. So you've got the interesting um, situation of um, a painting about somebody being who's going to be cured of their blindness. And this figure looks very much like um, a portrait that we have of Rembrandt's father who died the year before. So there's, a, and Rembrandt often painted uh, scenes from the Book of Tobit. So there's a very good chance that this is about the Book of Tobit, Rembrandt. Um, okay, now, as an art historian, I go a step further. And for example, I show you another picture. You've got here uh, a close-up picture of an eye with the painting superimposed on the, on the pupil, on the eyeball. Here you've got a reflection of, on the eyeball. And here you can see the, the staircase with the radiating lines here also, which becomes like the, ir the iris. Here you've got the old man. Here you also, in the center, you've got a round basket in the painting, I mean. And in the eye, uh, the human eye, there is a spot um, in the axis in the, of the, the eye in the middle where you have the sharpest vision. This is called the fovea and it's on the retina. So it could be, this would mean that Rembrandt, in painting this painting, was thinking about thinking about vision and about the eye because you see it is very circular and there's even here a circle in the middle so it's like concentric. Another thing that I contributed to the story of this painting as an art historian is, um, I hope I can get this to work, uh, let's see, no, the other one, or uh, in Rembrandt, here you can see how Rembrandt did his R. He does um, a big loop that goes into a little loop and then back out again. And you could see this here, here more. You can see uh, these are done with a pen. Now I'll show you the painting, I hope. Uh, uh, here. I'll see if I can find the painting with so, I don't know if you can see this, but I can trace an R 
with Rembrandt's particular shape here and make it go out here. And um, here's another painting from the same year, actually, which shows also a group which fits into the R and this which here is the center of the attention of the painting here, which is where the, um, the, the R, the bowl here, you can see another. This is from the same year. This is the anatomy lesson. And um, this is a discovery of mine, but uh, it's very unlikely that Rembrandt did this deliberately. He did this unconsciously. So you've got the eye representing its, itself and Rembrandt identifying with it. I don't know if there's much uh, time left on this video. Yes, there is. So I'm going to thank now Paul for uh, <laughs> making me do this assignment. I hope uh, I fulfilled it to his satisfaction and um, that you'll be interested in old master paintings and figuring out what they're about. This one is of course a very special painting. This is the few paintings that are that rich um, in or that concentrated uh, as I just showed you. Thank you very much Jean-Marie Clark or JMC signing off. Still a little bit of time. So um, this video was um, recorded in Germany and is, being, is going to be sent by WeTransfer directly to California uh, where I hope Paul will be able to use it. Bye bye. Did I forget anything? I'm sure I did. The end.